Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. Tonight we're going to play another game from the 1961 Boston Red Sox season featuring the career replay of Karl Yastrzemski, rookie. Uh, we're going to be starting a doubleheader with the Chicago White Sox at Fenway Park. This is the first game of the doubleheader on, a, I believe, a Sunday afternoon, May 21st of 1961. The Red Sox are currently 13 and 17, which is their exact record they were in the season. So they're holding pace there. Uh, Kyle Stremski has been struggling a bit so far, uh, but we'll see if he can uh, start to get his way out of it today against the White Sox and early win. So early win on the hill for the Chicago White Sox. White Sox are currently 5 and 0 against the Red Sox. Those are all the games against the Red Sox. So the Red Sox looking to win their first game uh, against the White Sox this year. Ike DeLock is on the hill for the Red Sox. DeLock is a perfect 4-0 on the season with a 3.45 earn run average. He'll be looking to go to 5-0. 41 and two-thirds innings, 44 hits allowed, 20 strikeouts, and 10 walks. So starting lineup for the visiting Chicago White Sox is going to be Al Smith, the right fielder. Hall of Famer Nellie Fox will bat second and play, and play second. Batting third is Minnie Minosa, the left fielder. Batting cleanup is Roy Seavers, the first baseman. The center fielder Jim Landis will hit fifth. J.C. Martin is the third baseman hitting sixth. Cam Carrion behind the plate bats seventh. Another Hall of Famer, Luis Aparicio, the shortstop, will hit eighth. And the pitcher early win will bat ninth. Early win also a Hall of Famer. A future Hall of Famer. So, behind the lock is going to be Estremski in left. Geiger in center, Jensen in right. Estremski and Geiger average range. Jensen above, uh, well, average defense. Jensen above average. Actually, that is range. Um, Geiger and Jensen... Both sh very, very short-handed with a three rating, three error rating, and both, all three have above average arms in the outfield. Melzone, Budden, Schilling, and Runnels in the infield, all average, except for Schilling, who's above average at second. Schilling, the most short-handed at second. Runnels right behind him. Behind the plate is Jim Pagliaroni, above average with an extremely high error rating, the highest he can get, and bolt average arm. And on the mound, DeLock is extremely error prone with a 20 rating and average average defensively. Average range. So Al Smith steps into the box. He's hitting... He hit two, 278 on the season with... 28 homers and 93 runs batted in. So far against the Red Sox, he's hitting 350 in five games with a homer and five runs batted in. So DeLock looks in for the sign from Pagliaroni. Here's the wind-up in the pitch to Smith. Possible error on the ground. And it's going to be a base hit to right. So falls in front of Jensen. So the leadoff runner is on for the White Sox. Next up is Nellie Smith. Sorry, Nellie Fox. He's hitting 251 on the season with two homers and 51 runs batted in. The lock looks in for the sign from Pagliaroni. Looks at the runner. Now operating out of the stretch. And he'll draw the walk. So the first two runners reach for the White Sox. And we have Minnie Minoso the, hitting 333 against the Red Sox with a homer and three runs batted in. 280 hitter on the season with 14 homers and 82 runs bat in. Red Sox playing back in double play depth. Looking to turn two. And they're going to get the runner at second as Schilling flips over to Budden, but they do not get the return runner. So a fielder's choice gets the middle runner. So we put runners at the corners with one down. For Roy Seavers. Roy Seavers having an excellent time against the Red Sox. Hitting 444 with five runs batted in. 
also has five runs scored. On the season for 1961, he hit 295 with 27 homers and 92 runs batted in. A lot of power in the White Sox lineup. Red Sox playing Pat back, hoping to turn two. Does not strike out. And it's going to be a fly ball to center. Let's see if they test it here. And they do not. As Smith will hold that third. So Red Sox one out away from getting out of it. With no damage. And we have Jim Landis. Landis, a 283 hitter on the season with 22 homers and 85 runs batted in. So far against the Red Sox hitting just 111 and 18 at bats. With three runs batted in. Here's the pitch. It's not a single. And he'll line out to Schilling at second to end the inning. So the Red Sox get out of it with no damage. And after one half, it's Boston nothing. I mean, uh, White Sox nothing, and the Red Sox coming up. It's an early one on the hill. He's had a no decision in one outing against the Red Sox, with a 1.19 earn run average. On the season, he was 8-2 and two with a 3.52 earn run average, 110 innings pitched, 88 hits allowed, 64 strikeouts, and 47 walks. For the Red Sox, it's going to be Chuck Schilling, the second baseman, leading it off, followed by Gary Geiger, the center fielder. The rookie, Carl Yastrzemski, will play left field and bat third. Batting cleanup is the right fielder, Jackie Jensen. Jim Pagliaroni behind the plate hits fifth. Pete Runnels is the first baseman, hitting sixth. Frank Malzone is having a fine season. Will bat seventh and play third. Don Budden, the shortstop, bats eighth. And Ike DeLock on the hill will bat ninth. So Chuck Chilling steps into the box. The defense behind Wynn is going to be Minoso, Landis, and Smith. Landis, the best fielder with a 5 rating. Excellent range. Very low error rating and above average arm. Minoso has, also has an above average arm in left. And Smith, very short-handed, but with an average arm in right. Minoso and Smith, average range. In the infield, it's Martin, Aparicio, Fox, and Seavers. Aparicio, extremely good range. At shortstop, Martin and Fox average range and Seavers below average range at first. Very low error ratings overall for the infield. Carrion behind the plate has average range. Is somewhat error prone, but not too bad. And but with a below average arm behind the plate. Early win has does not will not commit any errors, but has extremely important does not get to much as he has a one for a range. So the Red Sox, if they can get a run, will probably run against Win and Carrion. So Chuck Schilling steps into the box. He's hitting 254 in the season with a homer and actually eight or eight runs batted in. As we missed one one time we're recording it. So we'll see what he can do against the win. Win looks in for the sign from Carrion. Here's the lineup in the pitch. And that's going to be a fly out to right. Smith has it for out number one. Next up, Gary Geiger hitting 245 on the season with two homers and seven runs batted in. And he'll draw the walk. So a one out walk will brings up the rookie Kali Stremski. Hitting just 191 on the season. Three homers and 14 runs batted in. When looks in for the sign, looks the runner back, kicks and delivers. It's going to be a Finway Park check. Oh, and it's going to be a rare play. Slow roller fielded by the catcher who possibly bobbles and possibly throws wild to first. Resolved by rolling against the catcher error rate. First for a bobble and then for a throw. Cam Carrion bobbles the ball. It's going to be an error on Carrion. So Yastrzemski will reach on the error. So I put runners on first and second with one out. Jackie Jensen up to the plate now. Jackie Jensen also off to a fast start. Hitting 362 with three homers and 18 runs batted in. See if he can add to that RBI total with a base hit here. 
It's going to be a range play. And Aparicio gets to the ball. But his only play is to first. So that will advance the runners with two down now for Jim Paglaroni. Let's see if he can put the Red Sox on the board. Paglaroni hitting 310 on the season with a five homers and 16 runs batted in. So some good power numbers for Paglaroni early. And it's going to be a Fenway Park check. One, two. It's going to be a base hit. And it's going to be a double. So both runs will score. So a two-run double for Paglaroni puts the Red Sox on top, 2-0. So a good start for the Pags and the Red Sox. That brings up Pete Runnels. Runnels hitting 297 on the season already with three home runs. He hit three for the entire season in 61. In 143 games and only 25 games, he's already hit three. Eight runs batted in. See if the Red Sox can add to the lead here. And does not strike out. And he will get a base hit. Pagliaroni will hold that third. So that will put runners at the corners for Frank Melzone. Also off to a great start. Hitting 364 with 5 homers and 19 runs batted in. Chance to get his 20th here with a base hit. And he strikes out. Does not strike out often but does here. And that will end the inning. For the Red Sox, let's see here. I think we may have a unearned run. Pretty sure we do with Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski scored. Yeah, he was safe on the air. Kyger probably would have scored anyway. Yeah. Let's see here. Let's check this to be sure. So Geiger walked, so it's one out with a runner on first. And Shumsky should have gotten out, so let's say he got out. So that's a runner on second with two down now. And that would have been three outs. So I think actually both, all three runners, all, both runs are going to be unearned because that would have been a third out down there before any of the runs scored. All right, so so Red Sox score two unearned runs because of the error by Carey on the catcher, and they're on the board two nothing after after one. The White Sox will have Martin Carey and Aparicio up against the lock now with a two nothing lead. Martin two thirty on the season for the season with five homers and thirty two runs batted in. Here's the kick and delivery by DeLoc. And it's going to be ball four, so he'll draw our leadoff walk. That brings up Cam Carey and see if he can make up for his error. Hitting 270, hit 271 with four homers and 27 runs bat in. In three games against the Red Sox, he's, well, two games plus this one, he's hit 250. And we park ballpark check. And that's going to be a fly out to Jensen and right for out number one. Martin holds. Aparicio up now. Aparicio hitting well against the Red Sox this season. Hitting 421 with three stolen bases and six runs scored. Hit 272 for the season with six homers and 45 runs batted in. Here's the kick and delivery to Martin. And that's going to be a base hit. All right, we'll hold that second. So that'll bring up early win. He's going to be called upon the sacrifice here. Win one for two against the Red Sox so far this season. 162 on the season for the season with two runs batted in. So he will sacrifice here. Got to move the runners over. And it is a successful bunt. So Martin to third, Aparicio to second. So a single could tie the game. Al Smith, top of the order up now. Singled his first time up. 
can you arrange play? Oh no. Oh, thankfully, Gary Geiger is able to get to this one. That would have definitely scored two there easily. And it would have been an easy double for a win. I mean, for uh, Sir Smith. But instead, Geiger comes up with a run saving catch to end the inning. So the Reds, Red Sox hold their 2 nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the second. It's going to be Don Boot and Button up first for the Red Sox, followed by DeLock and Schilling. Button off to a fast start at the plate in 44 at bats, has a 341 average, with 10 runs batted in and 7 runs scored. And he'll fly out to Minoso for out number one. DeLock up now. DeLock hitting 263 on the season with a run scored in 19 at bats. And DeLock will help himself with a walk here. So it'll bring up Chuck Schilling with one down. Schilling 0 for 1 on the day. And he'll fly out to Smith and Wright for out number two. Geiger up now, walked and scored. And his only plate appearance so far. And he flies out to Minoso to end the inning. So after two full, it's Red Sox two and the White Sox nothing. You Fox, Minoso, and Seavers up against the lock. Fox walked his first time up against the lock. And Schilling is able to get to that one. Fires over to Runnels for out number one. Minoso up now, 0 for 1 today. And that's a ground ball to short. Buttons up with it over to Runnels. And that'll be out number two for the White Sox in the top of the third. Seavers up now, 0 for 1. Does not strike out. Instead, fights it off for a base hit. So, Seaver's on with a two out single. Brings up Jim Landers, 0 for 1 today. The lock looks at the runner, kicks and delivers. And he'll fly out to Geiger in center to end the inning. So head to the bottom of the third with the Red Sox up by two. Stremski reached on an error and scored. All for one today. Does not walk. Ooh, possible extra base hits here. And Yastrzemski is going to be on with a double. So Yastrzemski in scoring position with nobody out. Red Sox looking to add to the 2 0 lead. Jackie Jensen 0 for 1 up to the plate now. And back to back doubles. Yastrzemski will come around the score. So an RBI double by Jackie Jensen puts the Red Sox on top now 3 0. Paglioni also doubled, scoring two, driving in two runs. And this time he strikes out. So one down now for Pete Runnels. Runnels one for one today so far. And he does not strike out. He will fly out to left. Route number two. Frank Melzone up now. Struck out his first time up. Possible error. Nope, it's going to be a fly out to center, and that'll do it for the Red Sox. But they do score one on back-to-back -back doubles, and it's a 3 nothing Red Sox lead now. So we head to the top of the fourth. J.C. Martin will lead it off. Walked against Delock his first time up. Does not walk again. Instead, grounds out to Runnels. He'll take it to the bag himself for out number one. Cam Carrion up now 0 for 1. And he'll draw the one-out walk. Aparicio, one for one so far today. Ooh, just hold on. Pick off. 
you know, just not pick him off. Instead, he'll walk. So that'll put runners on first and second with one down for the pitcher win. He bunted. They had him bunt last time. I think I'm going to have him bunt again. He was successful last time, so why not try it again? So it's not a pass ball there, so we get a roll again. He is successful again. So Cameron moves up the third after he shared a second. Let's see if Al Smith can come through this time. One for two on the day. Ooh, possible error on the ground. And Button, known as Boot and Button, this time is able to handle it. And that'll end the inning. So once again, the White Sox have runners at second, third, and two out and cannot get a, cannot get a hit. And it remains 3-0 Boston as we head to the home half of the fourth. It'll be Button, Delock, and Schilling up against Wynn. Button's 0 for 1 today so far. And he flies out to Landis for out number 1. Delock up now. Walked his, in first, his first plate appearance. This time flies out to Minoso for out number 2. Chuck Schilling hitless on the day. This time draws the walk. A two out base runner for the Red Sox. Brings up Geiger, who walked and scored. 0 for 1 on the day. Possible error on a throw here. It is no throw. And he flies out to the right fielder. To end the inning. So we'll head to the top of the fifth with the Red Sox shutting out the White Sox 3 to nothing. Fox Minoso and Seavers up against the lock. Fox 0 for 1 with a walk. And no, no home run here. But he will fight it off for a base hit. So Fox on with a leadoff single. Brings up Minnie Minoso is 0 for 2. And he'll fly out to Yastrzemski for the first out of the fifth as Fox moves back to first. Roy Seaver's up now one for two. And that is going to be a 4-6-3 double play. So that'll be it for the White Sox in the top of the fifth. So halfway through, it's the Red Sox three and the White Sox nothing. Yastrzemski to lead it off. He doubled and scored his last time up. He scored two runs today. Average up to 196. This time he'll strike out, though. First out of the fifth. Jackie Jensen, one for two with a double and an RBI. This time Wynn will get him for the second out of the fifth. Pagliaroni up now. He also has an RBI double today. One for two. Flies out to Minoso to end the inning. So we'll head to the sixth with the Red Sox still on top. Three nothing. Each team with four hits. Landis Martin and Carrion up against the lock who's been cruising along. Along just four hits. Has walked four, though. Land us up now, 0 for 2 on the day. Grounds out to button at short for out, I mean, lines out to button at short for out number one. Martin up now, 0 for 1 with a walk. We'll ground one back to the lock. Flips over to Runnels for out number two. Carrion's over one with a walk up now. And 
And Button's unable to get to this one, so that'll be a base hit for Carrion. He'll be on with a two out single. Well, there is action in the Red Sox pen as the lock is starting to tire here. Brings up Aparicio, one form of the walk. And let's see what we got going here. So that's going to be a base hit. That brings up the pitcher early win. And they're going to pinch hit for him. Let's see. So Targetson, Esposito, or Robinson we use. Let's see. Let's go with Robinson 310. Let's see. So the Red Sox we get a pinch hitter here. And a pin, uh, sorry, a uh, relief pitcher will come in for the lock. So Stallard, Muffet, and Fornelace that would have pitched. All right, I guess we'll bring in Stallard for. All right, so Tracy Stallard comes in, 471 earn run average, 0 2 record, 15 and a third innings pitch, 14 hits allowed, 11 strikeouts, and 12 walks. Lloyd Robinson what, hit 310 on the season with 11 homers and 59 runs batted in. So a big moment here. Robinson could tie it up with a one swing of the bat possibly here. Red Sox looking to get out of it without any damage. Stow looks in for the sign from Pagliaroni. Looks at the runners. He has the wind up in the pitch. Oh, a wild pitch. Here's the pitch again. And he will ground out the shilling. And that'll do it. So the Red Sox get out of the jam. So Lone and Pierce were used in the game. Put the Pierce in here. Billy Pierce. Lefty, yeah. The lefty's coming up now. So we'll let Pierce come in. So Billy Pierce comes in for the White Sox. 10 and 9 record on the season. Three saves, 3.80 earn on average, 188 pitch, 80 innings pitched, 190 hits. 106 strikeouts and 51 walks. He'll face Reynolds, Millzone, and Budden. Reynolds one for two on the day. Possible error on a throw here. No error. Caprice makes the play for out number one. Billy Pierce up now. I'm mean, sorry, uh, Frank Millzone up now. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And he'll get a base hit. His first hit of the day. That brings up Don Budden, who's 0 for 2. And that's going to be a ground ball to second. And that'll be two. I mean, a short. Over to second point, back to first. Double play. 6 4 3 double play. And that'll be it for the Red Sox in the sixth. So we'll head to the seventh. With the White Sox down by three. Top of the order for the White Sox. Smith, Fox, and Reynoso up against Stallard. And that's going to be a fly ball to Estremsky and left for out number one. Nelly Fox up now one for two with a walk. And he's going to draw a one out walk. Reynoso for three up now. Possible error on a throw here. Nope. It's going to be a fly out to Yastrzemski for out number two as Fox moves back to first. Steel sign is on for Fox here. Trying to get something going and he'll be in there with a stolen base. 
So Fox steals second. So runner in scoring position now for Roy Sievers, one for three. Oh, and Sievers is going to take Stallard deep, 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 and gone. So Roy Sievers hits his first home run against the Red Sox and makes it a 3-2 to two game. So that is going to be it for Stallard. Let's see here. Fornelis and Hillman. We're going to bring in Hillman. That's now a one-run game. Hillman comes in now, not having a great season. We did on the actual season, 2.77 earn on average. So far, he's 1-0 and with one save and a 6.19 earn on average. 16 innings pitched, 22 hits allowed, 5 walks and 6 strikeouts. Hillman on to try to get Landis out to end the inning. Landis 0-3 for 3 on the day. Range play. And Pagaroni went able to get to it and been able to get a handle on the ball. And Landis will reach on a two-out single. J.C. Martin up now 0 for 2 with a walk. Tying run on first now. And he'll fly out to Yastrzemski to end the inning. But the White Sox score two on the Seavers two-run homer. It's now a 3-2 game as we head to the home half of the seventh. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back because it's root, root, root for the Red Sox. If they don't win, it's a shame because it's one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. All righty. Need a drink of Powerade after that. Alrighty. So it'll be Hillman, a pitcher's spot. And we're going to take him out. Let's just see what kind of a hitter he is. 098. Oh, so he is going to come out now for a pinch hitter. Alright, so the Wirtz or Nixon were used. Uh, I like to use him, but nah. Wirtz or Nixon? Let's try one more. If not, I'm going to pick Wirtz. Nope. Alright. So Vic Wirtz is going to come in. Ooh, no. He's a lefty. Oh, Nixon's a lefty, too. Hmm. I guess we'll use a different one just because maybe we will go with uh let's go replace stats here. I think we will use Rip Rapalski. He is a righty. Alright, so Rip Rapalski comes in. Eleven at bats, he's hitting three sixty four with a run scored so far. Rapalski in against Pierce on for his second in New York. And he'll fly out to Jensen and Wright for out number three. I mean for out number one. I mean Smith and Wright. He had the wrong lineup in the outfield there. Alright, so that brings up Chuck Schilling now with one gone in the seventh. He's so for two with a walk. And he will fly out to Smith and Wright also for out number two. Gary Geiger for two of the walk and a run scored. And he strikes out. So Red Sox go in order against Pierce in the seventh. So head to the eighth. With the Red Sox up by just one. And they're going to bring in their closer, Fornelis. Fornelis 0 and 2 with three saves, 5.67 earn on average, 12 and two thirds innings pitched, 15 hits allowed. Three walks and five strikeouts. He'll face Carrion, Aparicio, and Pierce, the bottom third of the order. Yeah, that's a foul ball. 
Red Sox clinging to a one-run lead. Cameron does not strike out. But will hit a grounder to Melzone at third. He's over to Reynolds for out number one. Abricio, two for two with a walk so far today. Range play. And Melzone loses the pop-up. That'll drop in there for a hit. So, three hits on the day. That pretty sure remains perfect. So, we're going to bring in a pinch hitter for Pierce here. Covington, Torgensen, or Robinson? I don't see Covington here. We already used Robinson, I think. So, I guess we're going to go with Torgensen. He was the other pinch hitter that was used. You know what? Oop. You got a base hit. Give me. It meant that was a range check on. Hold on here. Range play. Right there, yeah, that failed. Okay, so let's do this again. All right, so I think we're gonna leave Pearson because he's a better bunter than the pinch hitter that we had. So let's do that. Bunted too hard, and then double play. And he's going to hit into a double play. He was a three bunter, so that wasn't a bad choice there. Two, four. And then he's going to draw the walk. So Stremski walks to lead off the bottom of the eighth. Billy Pierce up. I mean, uh, Jackie Jensen up now. Oops, hold on there. Yeah, we let Pierce hit. Okay. Jackie Jensen, one for three with a double and an RBI. Oh, no home run there. Flies out to center for out number one. Paglione up now, one for three. Oh, and he's going to get a double. Stremski will hold that third. That is going to be it for Pierce. So Turk alone is going to come in now. The closer. He'll play the infield end. Pete Runnels up now. Pete Runnels is one for three on the day. Red Sox looking to add to their one run lead. Oh, nope. Does not get a hold on here. It's going to be a fly out to center. And that's going to be deep enough to score the run. Yastrzemski tags and scores. It's a 4-2 lead now. Now zone up now. 1 for 3 with a strikeout. And that's going to be a base hit. And Fox is unable to get to that one. Pagaroni will come around to score. So it's a 5-2 game now. So the Red Sox back up to 3 run lead. Don Button 0 for 3 on the day. That's going to be a base hit. So Mike Fornalist, they're going to let him hit. It's a three run lead now. Plus he did he did have 32 at bats, so we got to get him his at bats here. He's only had oops, three at-bats on the season, so we'll get him in another at-bat here. And 
and he will fly out the Geiger and center to end the inning with the Red Sox add two, and it's now 5-2 as we head to the ninth. Top of the order, Smith, Fox, and Minoso up against Fornelis. Fornelis looking for his fourth save of the season. Does not strike out Smith. Lines out the shilling for out number one. Nelly Fox up now one for two with two walks and a run scored. Give me a range play. And Budden will get to this one. Fire over to Reynolds for out number two. So the White Sox down to the last out. Brings up Minnie Minoso for four. You know, draw a two out walk. Roy Sievers, two for four with a two run homer. As both Chicago's RBIs today. Does not strike out. Oh, and that is going to be a single. As Minoso will hold at second. So the tying run will come up. Jim Landis, one for four. 283 hitter on the actual season with 22 homers, so we're going to let him hit. Tying run here. Fornos has to bear down. And he gets him. So Fornos gets him. The sh lone. I mean, uh, gets uh, Landis. Strikes him out to end the game. So the Red Sox hold on and win. By a score of 5-2. to two. Fireworks going on. Alright, so we'll save the stats here. Alrighty, so with the win, the lock goes to a perfect 5-0. and Early win gets the loss. Mike Fornelis gets his fourth save of the season. Only home run was a two-run shot by Severs, his first of the season. Well, not really his first, but his first against the Red Sox. He's only playing the games against the Red Sox. So let's take a look at the box score here. So, DeLock pitches five and two-thirds innings, allows six hits, walks four, does not allow an earned run or a run at, at all. ERA now down to 304. Tracy Stallard pitched an inning. Despite letting up two runs, he'll get a hold. One hit allowed, two runs, both of them earned, one walk. He allowed the home run to <coughs> Seavers. Dave Hillman, one-third of an inning, one hit allowed. Mike Fornelis gets his fourth save, two innings pitched, two hits allowed, two walks, and a, I mean one walk and a strikeout. Early win goes five innings, four hits, three runs. Only one of them was earned, three walks and four strikeouts. Yeah, right now 1.85 against the Red Sox. Billy Pierce, two and a third innings. Gives up two hits, two runs, all both of them earned, one walk and one strikeout. And Turk Lone pitches two thirds of an inning, allowing two hits. Hey, Miss Mags is here to say hi. You can hear her purring away there. All right. Yeah. So, uh, else, let's see. For the Red Sox, Chuck Schilling goes 0 for 3 with a walk. Gary Geiger. 0 for 3 with a run scored and a walk. Kali Shremsky, 1 for 3. Did score 3 runs, though. Reached on an error and also a walk. So, productive day for you, Shremsky, on that one double he had. Jackie Jensen, or average now 195 for you, Shremsky. Jackie Jensen, 1 for 4 with an RBI and a double. Jim Pagliaroni had a good day, 2 for 4. With a couple of doubles. One of them was a 2-run double. Scored a run. Pete Runnels, one for three with an RBI. Frank Melzone, two for four with an RBI. Don Budden, one for four. Mike Delaco for one. Also walked once. Tracy Stallard and Dave Hillman did not get at bats. Rick Popolsky, 0 for one as a pinch hitter. And Mike Fornelis, 0 for one at the plate. So for the White Sox, Al Smith was 1 for 5. Nellie Fox, 1 for 3 with a run scored. 2 walks. Manny Minoso, 0 for 4 with a walk. Roy Sievers, 3 for 5 with a 2-run homer. Jim Landis, 1 for 5. 
J.C. Martin, 0 for 3 with a walk. Cam Carrion, 0 for 1 for 3 with a walk. Aparicio, 3 for 3, had a good day with one walk. So the Red Sox pitchers gave up six walks and are winning what they did end up winning. Early win did not get an at -bat, official at bat. He had two sacrifice bunts. Floyd Robinson 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. Billy Pierce 0 for 1. And Turk Long did not get an at bat. So the Red Sox prevail and win 5 to 2 now. So now they're one game ahead of their pace. Let's go to that in a second here. As we save the game here. One thing you have to do with inside pitches, you have to make sure that you save the game. And we'll be right back after the save and check out their record. So the Red Sox are currently now 14 and 17. In the replay, they were 13 and 18 after the loss today. They lost, I think it was 6 to 5, but they did lose. On uh, this game, they did win, so they're one game ahead of their pace. So we'll be back with game two of the doubleheader from. May 21st of 1967 and uh, I'm not sure exactly what they did actually they would win the second game of the doubleheader so if they can win that one they'll remain one game ahead of their pace for the season so join us for that game this was game number 31 we'll be back with game number 32 of the Kai Stremski career replay using inside pitch baseball from the 1961 season. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.